Hello everybody, welcome to yesterday's. I need to see the hands of everybody in the room who's visiting Arizona. All the visitors. Nothing's going to happen to you. I just want to know where you are. Okay, good. Where, where are you from? Ohio, right? Where are you from, dear? What part of Pennsylvania? Johnstown. Oh. You think you had a flood. You should have been here two weeks ago Wednesday. Well, wherever you're from, we're glad you're here. We love our visitors, don't we, Arizona? That's the sickest thing I've ever heard. Now, come on. We love our visitors, don't we? We do. The other night, a lady said to me, you know, you call them snowbirds. You shouldn't call them snowbirds. That's a derogatory term. I said, Madam, you're ill. Snowbird's the nicest word in Arizona. Snowbirds, anybody comes here in the winter and spends all that gorgeous green money that keeps our taxes down while we're sitting here sweating off our cushions in the summer. We love snowbirds. But how much fun you're going to have depends totally upon what type of visitor you are. Now, our Marines down here, essentially, they're what you call Group A. They have the most fun of anybody. They're the ones that don't know a damn soul in Arizona. They fly in, they're taken to a nice resort, they stay for a week or so, then they leave. They have a wonderful time, but they don't bother us, really. Hell, you never see them. Stay off Scottsdale Road. You don't even know they're here. <laughs> if you want to see number ones, you have to go to Fifth Avenue Shopping Center. That's where they all are, buying authentic Indian hook rubs from Taiwan. <laughs> and having real Mexican food and cocos. <laughs> Cuyevos Rancheros. <laughs> and tacos with guacamora. Yeah. Second category of visitors, I flat don't talk about after December 1st because there's too many of them and they get hostile. They think I'm picking on them and I'm not. I'm not picking on them at all. It's just that the second category are the ones that make Arizonans into crazy people. Zonies, will you back me up? Okay. The ones that make us into crazy people are the ones that bring their own damn cars. Now, am I telling the truth or what? Oh, you don't know. Jirenes, I'm telling you, you have no idea what's going to happen here December 1st. 49 other states, Canada and Mexico, all with their own separate little driving insanities, all arrive in Phoenix on the same damn day. And we've only got two kinds of streets in Phoenix, inadequate and under construction. That's the only kind we have. And you can always pick out a visitor in a car. Hell, you don't have to look at the license plate. Go to Lincoln Drive at rush hour. Can't miss them. This enormous vehicle. Lord, it's big. It's like in two zip codes. It's coming up the middle of the road, going 14 miles an hour. Two people in the front seat and a map spread out on the dashboard. Little dog in the back window. Dead. The ladies on the passenger side looking intently at North Mountain. He's driving the thing that way, but he's looking at South Mountain. And the left turn signal is on. Did you ever notice that? Did you notice that? Blinking gets hard out. And you can't pay attention to it. Hell, it's been on since Iowa. That's how they were told to get here. Go to Iowa, make a left. There it is. Of course, the fact that the turn signal's blinking does tell us one very important thing. It tells us immediately they're not from Phoenix. See, we don't use ours. Have you noticed that? We don't. Why should we? When the hell's the last time anybody was able to make a left-hand turn anywhere in Phoenix? I, I don't even know how anymore. Arizona's an old Indian word. It means land of three rights. But the third category of visitors are the most numerous and the most confused. I don't know if we have any here tonight. We're, of course, referring to any poor, misguided soul who has come to Arizona for the purpose of visiting friends or family. And worse than that, staying with them. It's not her first stop tonight, is it? Now, if you fall in this category, please don't think I'm picking on you. We love you. But you're confused. The reason you're confused is because you don't know why you're here. You see, you probably still think you're here for a little visit. That has nothing to do with why you're here. Are you paying attention to me, ma'am? 
You might as well listen to Uncle Dave because it's the only place in this valley you're going to hear the truth. If you're in Phoenix visiting friends or family and staying with them, the reason you're here is in preparation for your move here. That's why you're here. See, because that's how we are. And it's okay, too, because if we weren't that way, there'd only be 35 people in this house. Well, let's talk about us, Arizonans. There's only three kinds of us. First kind, hard to find. It's called a native. Well, now wait. A native is someone who was born here on purpose. I mean, Mom wasn't riding through and hit a bump on Grand Avenue. It was meant to be. Are you a native? Stand up, please. That's what they look like, in case you've never seen them before. They look almost like normal people. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Second category, fun group. I love them. I call them long-term Arizona. People who were born somewhere else but have lived here a long, long time. 25, 30, 40 years. Any long-term Arizonans here? Yeah, there they are. Yeah. You can always tell a long-term Arizona. All they do 24 hours a day is bitch that they didn't buy Paradise Valley when it was $5 an acre. Right? And it's always her fault. I could have bought that sucker and she wouldn't let me. Number three, guys like me. Been here a little less time, but I'm coming up in 20 years. We all have one thing in common, though, and this is the truth. If you live in Phoenix, you love Phoenix. And the minute you're born here or moved here, you become members of a walking, talking chamber of commerce determined to spend the rest of our lives making everybody we know who doesn't live here miserable for the rest of their lives. Now, you visitors, especially from colder parts of the world, let me tell a story. See if anything I say sounds familiar. Chances are, at some point in your life, somebody you know moved to Phoenix. From the day they unpacked their bag, your life's been hell back there, hasn't it? Didn't you start getting propaganda immediately, ma'am? Every day, letters, postcards, pictures, Arizona Highway magazines. And worst of all, the phone calls that never come in good weather. <laughs> come on, what's the first thing we do every morning before prune juice even? First thing we do, we rush out the front door and get that newspaper. Do we look at the headlines? Of course not. Sports? Nah. Last page, first section. Well, let's see what's it doing back there today. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> oh, damn it's no one like hell <laughs> oh, hey hon look at this no one like hell <laughs> call him up there they are freezing all things it's too damn cold to use anyhow hi How's the weather back there? <laughs> well, it's been snowing for three days. Pretty soon it's going to clear up. It's going to clear up, huh? Oh, yeah, pretty soon it's going to clear up to my ass. It's been snowing for three days. It's very cold here. Well, gee, that's a damn shame. <laughs> but it's cold in Phoenix, too. Yesterday, I got all the way down to 88. <laughs> hey, honey, get me a beer. I'm in the pool. You know, so. Next thing they know, they find themselves sitting on a big bird flying to Phoenix. And that's scary. First time you fly here is unnerving. Every place else on God's earth, when you're in an airplane, you look out of the window to the ground, the ground's green. From an airplane, Arizona looks like 40,000 miles of kitty litter. What a pooper scooper this place could take. And then the plane lands at Sky Harbor International Airport. Now, you've got to live here to know how funny that is. International Airport. Grow up. <laughs> the only thing international about Sky Harbor is every month they fly a Piper Cub to Tijuana for marijuana. Eh? But you got to admit, you guys that live here, it is the funniest place in the Southwest in summer dead of summer, hottest day of the afternoon, 2 o'clock, what you want to do if you want to laugh yourself purple, go to the airport and sit and watch people walk out the front door for the first time. That's the funniest thing you've ever seen. 
They get off the plane upstairs and they're walking through these cool air conditioned hallways looking out the windows and they're going, oh, it's beautiful here. It's gorgeous here. Nobody's told them. The 118 here. When she left Johnstown, 112 was the lowest setting on the oven. They go downstairs, they get their luggage, everything's great, and then those two big doors. Looks like this all summer. Oh my God. More people get religion at that door. And still there's some woman from Arizona with a sweater on her shoulders saying that it gets chilly at night. You can always pick out the Arizonas at the airport. She's got her damn sweater on. And he goes in the hall closet and digs out his cowboy hat and his Kmart bola tie. I hope, I hope they don't think we wear that when they're not here. And also, don't believe all the Western accents. You can't live somewhere like New York for 60 years, be here for 18 months, and talk like John Wayne. I sure do love it. Out cheer. Out cheer. The second the visitors leave, we turn to each other, we say, Oh, thank God they're gone, my face hurts from talking like that. <laughs> the first thing will happen is you'll be taken to the car. Now, if you don't pay attention to anything else, I say, listen to me here. Once you get into an Arizonan's car, get comfortable, because that's where you're going to spend the whole damn week, is in that car. Trust me, this is a big valley. You're not leaving until you've seen every inch of it. You won't get a suntan this week, but I guarantee gas ass before you get back home. You're going to be thrilled to go home so you can find somewhere to stand up for 20 minutes. And if you're visiting a native, it's even worse because before you can get in their car, they make you walk around it so they can show you it's not rusty. We don't care if they run. They just can't be rusty. Do you ever notice whenever visitors in nearby Arizonans only know two sentences? One. It's a dry heat. Two, this is the biggie. They hit you with this one, pack your bags here, you're moving. That's when they look you straight in the face with all the sincerity of Mother Teresa. And they say to you, after you've been here a while, your blood thins. <laughs> but you gotta understand, our intentions are good. We only have one week to change your whole life. We're gonna tell you whatever it takes. They knew what to tell me, 1974. I moved 3,000 miles on the strength of one sentence. Know what they told me? They said, David, if you move here, you can play golf in the middle of August and not even sweat. <laughs> a big lie. I bought it, too. Well, you can. You're going you're, you're gonna to drop dead from heat stroke in the first hole. You'll never sweat again. Tee off, 2 a.m. <laughs> Did they tell you it only rains seven inches a year? Yeah. They tell you it's on a Tuesday? <laughs> Don't laugh, honey, you're not that tall. It could get you. <laughs> Scared the drawers off me. I moved here February 1974. I was here one week. And we had one of our bi-monthly hundred-year floods that we get. Scared the hell out of me. I'm from the East Coast. I lived by that ocean my whole life. All those years, it never moved. One week in Phoenix, the Atlantic and the Pacific met at 43rd Avenue and Bell. Oh, it was awful. There was some guy on Camelback with a big boat taking animals on it. I didn't know what the hell it was. <laughs> you ever see Bell Road when it rains? Yeah. Lake Erie South, you ever see it? Yeah. It's that deep. Sir, I'm telling you the truth, it's that deep. Last time it rained up there, a couple weeks ago, Wednesday, remember? It was that deep. There was a flasher up there. He was a flasher. <laughs> How do you say flasher in Johnstown? Flasher, uh... Is this an organ joke? No. No, it's not an organ joke, sir. A flasher. Hmm. I felt sorry for him. There was so much water up there. Every time he opened his raincoat, he caught a trout. Yeah, it is an organ joke. <laughs> and yet we get so defensive. Did you ever notice Arizona is the only place on God's earth where bad weather is not our fault? Now think about this. Anywhere else, you get bad weather. You got bad weather. No big deal. Not here. Let one cloud come in the sky of Phoenix. Every damn time California gets a storm, we get it too. 
All the years I lived in Pennsylvania, it never even occurred to me to blame Ohio. And I did, if we don't blame California, who do we blame? The visitors. Come on, Arizonans, let's say it together. You brought it with you. Beautiful for you to hear. I gotta share, we have, I've gotta share, we have so many Phoenicians here. We had flooding right out front here a couple weeks ago. Scared me. I'm standing out front looking at it. My bartender, John, comes out with great advice. You know what he says? You ought to call the city. <laughs> good advice. Yeah, have you ever called the city? No, no, I'm not going to do political jokes. Not in this state. Every time a political joke comes in this state, we elect him. I called the city. I said, I'd like to report some flooding. They said, we'll connect you. I said, good. To what? They said, to the Bureau of Flood Control. Did you know we had a Bureau of Flood Control? Not only that, it's the first county agency that has that new, I don't know what to call it, the automated answering thing, you know, if you're calling from a touchstone phone. What a weapon in the hands of the state of Arizona. This is what you hear. You reach the Maricopa County Bureau of Flood Control's automated answering service. If the water is up to your ass, press one. <laughs> If you've already flowed out of the county, don't press nothing, sucker. You ain't my problem. <laughs> I stayed on the line because I wanted to speak to the head man. Do you know who runs it? Do you remember the Andy Griffith show? Do you remember Gomer? He's working. I got him on the phone. I said, I'm at 8th Street and Cave Creek and it's flooding. Know what he said? Probably raining. I said, I never looked at it that way. Why is it flooding? He says, hell, I don't know. Maybe they ain't put sewers up there yet. <laughs> sewers, that's funny. See, they put sewers in every street in this city twice last month. That's all they do. Put them in, dig them up, put them in, dig them up, put them in, dig them up. Stick them suckers in with a zipper, save money for a year or two. Why don't we just tell the truth? It's very simple. The truth is a German shepherd with a weak bladder can knock out Scottsdale just like that. Something else, all you visitors, you will spend the whole week in the car, but you'll cover no distance. Have you noticed that yet here? See, we don't have distance here. You have it. In Pennsylvania, distance is the measured space between two things or places. Measured. Like if you're in Pittsburgh and you ask anybody how far is Columbus, Ohio, it's 300 miles. If you're in New York and you ask someone how far is Philadelphia? 250. Well, no. If you're in New York, they'll say, hey, what am I, a map? been there, haven't you? But the answer is 90 miles. Go ahead, I dare you. Get anybody in this room to tell you how far anything is from anything. They'd rather die. How far is Flagstaff? About three hours. It's closer to coming back. It's downhill. I bet you got in the car tonight and said, now where are we going? Yesterday. How far is that? 20 minutes. How did it happen? One guy said the reason Phoenicians will never talk about miles is because if we do, people might ask us how many miles we drive around here each year, and we don't even want to think about that. Makes sense. How else could I explain it? I've got a 1989 automobile with 124,000 miles in that poor sucker. Never been out of the valley, sir. It's just, that's why it's not rusty. It's too poop to get rusty. Because, you know, like if you're going to drive across our valley, the whole valley, which would be what? East Mesa? to Sun City West, Maron. The game may have to go through fruit check. Oh, can you pick out the visitors on that? Look at John's sound, look at her, she just went, what's fruit check? Fruit, fruit, no, no, no. No, not that, that's something else, dear. That's further west. <laughs> Arizonans, did you know they have stopped fruit check? Did you know that, sir? I'm sick about it. They stopped fruit check. I'm sick about it. I miss it already. I mean, every place else, every other state, after you've experienced fruit check, 
And then you drive your car across other borders. It's boring as hell. All they have on their border is a cheap tin sign. Welcome to Nebraska. You've just entered North Dakota. Don't make a habit of it. Arizona was special. Now, for the benefit of the visitors, I'm going to talk about fruit shake. Zonies, keep me honest. In the old days, you'd be driving down the highway in southern New Mexico. You're heading west. The Arizona border is right down the road. <laughs> Suddenly, you notice something really strange. Hundreds and hundreds of cars parked off on the side of the road, and everybody's out sitting on the hood eating bananas. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Yep. Yes. Then you get to the border. Was there a sign? Look, the Marines don't believe a damn word I'm saying. It's the truth. Then you got to the border. Was there a sign on the border? No. All there was was a little building right in the middle of the, middle of the road. It looked exactly like a toll booth on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. That's exactly the first time I saw it. I thought, I'll be damned, they're going to charge me to get in. So I get out my quarter. I park my car and the door opens. Inside was a person. Older than dirt. He was wearing an official State of Arizona Fruit Checker t-shirt. I don't want to say he was fat, but he looked like a quart of milk and a pint bottle. He was wearing some kind of jeans, but you really couldn't see him because the waistband of him is somewhere down underneath his belly, the size of the Yavapai County. And also rumor had it that somewhere down there, there was an enormous turquoise belt buckle facing the ground. I haven't seen the light of day since 1948. He was wearing a gun that he couldn't reach with help. Are you all right, ma'am? He comes out of the little house. He walks up to your car. He sticks his face in the window and says, You got any fruit? You're kidding. Boy, I'll bet they got some dandy answers on the California border. <laughs> bet your ass, sweetie, two in front, three in back. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know why they were there? Can you guess why they were there? They were there to protect us from fruit. Look at them laughing. Ma'am, you've lived here your whole life. Have you ever once been attacked by a grape in the state of Arizona? You're safe from fruit attack while you're in the state. Doesn't that give you a warm feeling? Guns and murderers, hell of a good chance. But no fruit will hurt you. Well, I, uh, you want to know why there's so many illegal aliens? They cross the border without fruit. You could drive a truck full of TNT into Arizona to blow up Tucson. They'd say, well, it's all right with the dynamite, but I gotta take your plums. <laughs> Personally, I think fruit check's the only reason there is a Tucson. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm, don't get, no, I'm not getting, no. Let me explain this, it's scientific. See, every year, hundreds of thousands of cars and trucks and buses come in our state through southern New Mexico that are headed to Phoenix, is that fair to say? That's a long drive from the New Mexico border to Phoenix, a hell of a long, Tucson's halfway, almost exactly halfway between Phoenix and the border. Right. In from the border, Tucson is what? It's 100 and... Two hours. Thank you. Two hours from the border. And if you eat all that fruit at the border, <laughs> sometimes you're lucky to make Tucson. Well, come on, they call it Green Valley. I didn't make it up, you know. So all you folks that are visiting, I want you to have a good time, and you'll understand. You, know, you gotta understand, your people are convinced you can and should move here. Bye. Tuesday. And no matter what you say, they're going to shoot you down like a duck, so don't argue with an Arizona. Have you learned that yet? 
You can't win. See, there's only two good arguments on why you can't move here. One, well, I would miss the changing of the seasons. I would miss a white Christmas. Shall we say it together, Zonies? You want snow? Get in your car and drive three hours up the flagstaff. Or, I'm not ready to retire. What about my job? What a silly mercenary thing to be thinking about. An income. You say, what are you worried about a job for? By God, we have Honeywell. Or if you want my advice, if you never want to be out of work one day the rest of your life, learn how to put in sewers. <laughs> Don't be surprised, dear. This will be the only vacation you've ever had where I promise you'll spend at least one afternoon walking through houses for sale. It's going to happen. Expect it. And also, we'll want to convince you that you're out here in the Wild West, so they're going to take you somewhere authentic. Rawhide! Yes. Please don't begrudge us that. It's a fun place. The only time we go is when you're here. <laughs> but you know, the more I think about it, I think we scare our visitors more than help them. I do. I'll tell you why. Two things. First off, there's a lot of things in our state that truly you have to live here for a little while to understand. Secondly, these people have heard things about us in the first place. They've heard things about people like us who live in this kind of a climate. They've heard our brains are fried. <laughs> They've heard that living in Phoenix is like spending the rest of your life with your butt stuck in a crock pot on simmer. <laughs> this dear lady will never use another crock pot without thinking of me. And when they come here, they're watching us for signs of damage. Let's look at what we do to our visitors. That doesn't look good. We put them in the back seat of this stupid car that never rusts. <laughs> and we spend day after day driving them through this beautiful but endless desert. And they don't say nothing. They just sit there. <laughs> big sign comes up that says, you've entered the Tonto National Forest. <laughs> Not a tree anywhere. In fact, all they can see is rocks. The whole state's made from rocks. Mountains of rocks, valleys of rocks, hills of rocks, everywhere you look. Piles of rocks, no trees. Just rocks. Here comes another big sign. Watch for rocks. You take them on a road called Cave Creek. No caves. No creeks. They're scared to ask what dreamy draw means. Let alone why somebody put busted dishes on top of a freeway wall. We take them to Pima Road in beautiful Scottsdale and show them three bridges in the middle of a cotton field. <laughs> Nothing coming to them, from them, over them, under them. Just three bridges in the middle of a cotton field. And they don't say nothing, they just sit there. We brag about the modern Arizona highway system. You know what our Marines are going to go home and tell their friends about us? They're going to go back home and they're going to say, do you know in Phoenix, Arizona, the way they fix a bump? They put a sign up that says, bump. <laughs> Everybody comes here, usually hears a certain sentence. Visitors, put me to the test. See if anyone has said this to you. One good thing about Phoenix is you really can't get lost here because Central goes down the middle. Hey, hosts, do you really want to have fun with the Marines? Let them go driving by themselves in Sun City. 
<laughs> it's a wonderful place. But a lot of those folks are there because they couldn't find their way out. They're just, nah, 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 nah. Then they sell their cars and get golf carts and go around. Nah, nah, nah. And sooner or later they say, sooner or later they say, oh hell, buy a house. We'll never find our way out of here. I gotta go to the bathroom. Damn water pills. But our visitors forgive us this silly stuff. There is one thing that we do to them, and we all do it, and we shouldn't. We don't think a thing of it. Do you know what that is? We spend all day, without a word of explanation, driving them over huge bridges. Excuse me, why is this bridge here? Well, hell, that's the Salt River. They think we see water down there. And then to really screw them up, in the middle of the bridge is a great big sign, no fishing. So there they are in a car that won't rust on a bridge that's got nothing under it and you're not allowed to fish and what's not there? And what passes them on the bridge? A guy pulling a boat. We take them to Tempe on Mill Avenue. We've done that, haven't we? Going into Tempe on Mill Avenue, you drive over a great big old bridge, and they don't say nothing, they just look. <laughs> Coming back from Tempe on Mill Avenue, we drive them under the great big old bridge. And... <laughs> Take them to Sun City, show them the new river. Yeah, well, that sucker must be new, there ain't no water in it yet. Show them the Agua Fria. They say, Agua Fria. It's free of Agua. <laughs> you show them the Salt River, the New River, the Agua Fria River, you can't understand why they don't want to go with us to Canyon Lake. <laughs> you should hear these people late at night in the bedroom when the doors close, what they're saying about us. I don't mind sitting in the car pretending I'll see a river. But I'll be damned if I'm getting in the boat in the middle of a canyon and pretending I'm in a lake. And then the young folks, the natives, the ones that were born here and raised here, they don't help. They come in, they say, oh yeah, when you move here, we'll go tubing down the river. Oh, what a picture that makes. It's like these young people wrap inner tubes around their skinny butts and run around on the rock somewhere praying for rain. You know. Is it fair to say one of the reasons we don't talk too much about our bridges is that our bridges are just a little too hard to talk too much about? How do you explain the bridges of Phoenix? Here's what I've come up with. Marines, all our wonderful visitors, see if this helps you. All over Phoenix are big, beautiful bridges going over nothing. Just so that when something does go under them, it can knock them down. Does that help you at all? Johnstown, it, well, I've been to Johnstown. I used to work there. You have lots of bridges in Johnstown. Did you ever notice in that part of the world how much water is going under the bridge? It has nothing to do with how many people are using the bridge. It's two different things. In Phoenix, Arizona, the minute any water goes under a bridge, they close it. Am I telling the truth? Okay, so look, all you folks that are visiting, I want you to have a good time, and you will. <laughs> and when you move here, and you will, you don't believe me. She doesn't believe me. Wait a minute, maybe. What's your name here? 
Hi, Catherine. Maybe I can prove something to you, dear. A little while ago, I asked for the hands of all the visitors. Quite a few hands went up. I'm going to ask one more question. And would you look around the room as I ask this? Could I see the hands of anybody who at one time or another visited Arizona and now you live here? Would you put your hands up, please? <laughs> do you get the picture? So when you do move here and you get visitors of your own, instead of putting them through all the stuff we're putting you through, bring them here the first night. I'll do this silly monologue and you could relax and enjoy each other for the rest of the week. Welcome to Arizona. You've been a wonderful audience. From all of us, thank you for coming to yesterday's. Yesterday's is a lot more than just a restaurant. It's an experience. Well, let's talk. Have you enjoyed yourself tonight? You know, it's so nice to have a place where I can bring my parents. Excuse me. <laughs> Did you enjoy yourself tonight? Time's sure fun when you're having flies. For reservations, call 861-9080. Yesterday's at 9035 North 8th Street.